Good morning. Today is day three of our little adventure and it's bittersweet because while we still have a bit of the trip to go, it's coming to an end, which is damn sad. But in other news, it is also very exciting today because we're going to get to do some little handicraft. I will probably kill it, but based off the pot, but the pottery that, that Winston did the last time, I think he will fare better than me. Lah. Well, find out how well I do in this episode of Bikers, Bikers and Bikes. Bikes. Twenty twenty four will be the third year that we have been creating content with Direct Asia, and thanks to that, we are proud of the Triple Three community that has been formed and growing day by day. We love hearing you tell us about your thoughts and experiences from to the test, and seeing you explore places from bikers and bikes. It's amazing to see our community enjoying the content, and even more so to witness more people explore freedom on two wheels because of it. We create content because we believe the freedom afforded by two wheels needs to be shared. And every single rider embodies this every time they swing their leg over and start their engines. It is this shared belief that enables us to run the Two Wheel Freedom Campaign with Direct Asia. To meet fellow riders who share our interests, to keep creating content that you love. If you'd like to help support your community directly, consider Direct Asia as your insurance of choice. Experience Two Wheel Freedom with Direct Asia. Use promo code VERYOK30 at checkout for a $30 e-capital voucher or VERYOK60 for a $60 e-capital voucher. Head on down to directasia.com slash triple three for more information. Thank you to Direct Asia for making this video possible. Not everyone understands how lucky we are that we are able to get to hop on a bike and explore Malaysia. Experiencing new places, new vibes and of course, food. Do you have a favourite place in Malaysia? Yes, of course. Where is it? My favourite place is here, Kuantan. <laughs> Serious? Ah? Yeah, I like Kuantan a lot, man. The distance from uh, Singapore to here is the, to me, is the perfect distance. Not too short, oh. not too far. The route is very, very scenic. So I don't really like to go North South Highway as much as before. I prefer oh, the B yeah, roads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 400 plus click from Singapore, right? Haven't even touched 400. For you, what is your favourite place? I don't really have a favourite place in Malaysia but not too near lah. so I think Kuantan is quite nice uh -huh. KL is quite nice Desaru for example is a bit too short one of my favourite places have to be like Genting, Cameron mainly because of the weather lah. it's nice and cool and chill and for me Kuantan 3 days to night is really a perfect time for the trip uh, if I want to go Cameron, I will probably take 5 days or 6 days because I still prefer to go by B roads up to Cameron. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I, which, I, which, 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 I'm gonna say, we will be doing that road from Kuantan to Cameron for our two wheel freedom ride this year. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't see that coming, right? <laughs> Natural Batik Village started out as a passion project to preserve the traditional Malaysian batik culture. It soon transformed into a small-scale industry and was incorporated in 2007, offering products like clothing, tablecloths, scarves, and the likes. Uh, this is a normal wax we're using in the house. Candle wax? Yes, it's candle. Oh. Yeah, this we call this is a paraffin wax. Uh. We mix some together, make the pot to pouring, then we can use it in front of rock to stamp it. That's so, why you get this colour? Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh. We just mask a uh, little bit enough because this is too expensive. So if it's white paraffin yeah. on yeah. white paper, so, you, uh, uh, white yeah. cloth, you easy, can't see Easy to print the colour. This is Miss Te. And what she was showing me just now was called block printing so you kind of like it's it's basically like a mall and you stamp 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 you can do a lot more these guys are doing hand batik so you can imagine the the yeah you, you gotta be an artist to do to do batik la. it's uh, using the hand tree design this is the only one piece it's uh, different with the block print so this is actually we make it this is uh, for can make this the, the man shirt here we have the two piece you can look at the part here we have the middle here we will write down here oh, and then different the two, different color normally two shirts, yeah two. two shirt this is a uh, one piece this is another piece so we have we can do that different color here guys 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 i noticed something eh. Cut, 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 cut. If all the center lines are a little bit shorter, uh, 333 logo already. Uh. 
same like this you can look at this here also this for ready blouse you can look at the two color for the it's already done for this two piece you can look at this the middle here so actually this is a for ready shirt you can look at the design also because it's a flower and this also before we paint with the wax we have to write down with the pencil first why the budget we need using the wax uh? actually the wax uh, is a block with the color so you can look at the color it's, it's very white. interesting you see how it's colored out mm. there but the wax stops it from going in we, we can one one color here different mm -hmm. also yeah because here the wax is already broke here yeah. yeah any color but if you want the same color you just brush one color if you want the different color one 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 by one to paint the color You think that all that's left to do is to allow the dye to dry, right? I thought so too. The fabric goes through even more processes that locks in those colours and gets rid of the wax. Uh, this is a dye material, so we need to put inside the sodium. It's sodium liquid, we call this. So actually, this is for the fixing the colour. Yeah, we need to oh, take so time. Oh, so the colour, when you wash the colour, don't come out? Yes, right? yes, we need to take time around 6 hours. After 6 hours, we get it up and then we need to remove the wax. So now we need to remove the wax. Actually, this is using the hot water only. So you can look at the brown colour, look at this, uh, have the colour in this. Actually, that means the wax already coming up already. After that, we're just washing the uh, water, normal water only. It's very clear, no wax, no more wax no already. Wax. Yeah, no more wax already. Oh, and the colour stay, uh? Yeah, yeah, because we already fixing yeah, we with us. Yeah, so they are Yeah, sodium. for the fixing already, the colour after 6 hours. After this, we need to uh, going up to the dry. So, this is the, how to dry the material. So, this is already done. So, you can look at the all the white line. <laughs> <laughs> all the white line before there all is the wax yes uh, so this order also is a make for the ready brows this, this is hand, hand, hand drawn, free right? yes one of the perks of having batik done by hand is that you get to have custom designs miss Tay mentioned to me that they will work with you to get the designs you want within a few days if customization isn't your thing then ready-made fabric might be it We are going to try to do our own little batik thing but mm. instead of hand-drawn, we decided to go with something that's known as block print. So it's kind of like just filling in the colours lah. Because if hand-draw, sure chala one. I chose the butterfly. I'm choosing the monkey. I sure bang. Yeah, we're going to start. You think that running wax over our pencil written names is an easy task? No way man, you need skill for that and the experience to know when the wax is too hot where it can get too runny or too cold where it gets too sticky The pencil marking no use one <laughs> yeah, We never follow the pencil marking no pointless. <laughs> The time has come mm. for me to completely fail at this <laughs> again uh, They've given us paint It's a kind of fabric dye that they use so it looks like watercolour but it's not watercolour Then they give us this mixing guide so that we know what primary colours to mix to get secondary colours or secondary colours to get the other colours which is quite interesting lah. This activity costs 15 ringgit, yes. right? After you are done, you've got the option of taking it back immediately, right? So they will get rid of the wax and you, you can take your art piece back but you cannot wash it, okay? Mm. The other option is you leave it here and then it will go through the whole the sodium silicate process to lock in those colours Right, and then they can ship it to you. Shipping to Singapore as of now is 60 ringgit. However, if you have friends in JB or anywhere closer for that matter, lah, you can ship within Malaysia for 12 ringgit. Hmm. So don't have friends in Johor, make some friends in Johor. Mm -hmm. I don't know, my, my, this butterfly is going to be like high on drugs or something. <laughs> it's going to have all kinds of colors. Lah. This is a really good activity for the kids or those that identify as kids. <laughs> It's fun, it's creative, and it teaches patience. What you see on screen is sped up. up. I think we took about 45 minutes to finish dyeing the artwork. We chose to have the pieces treated and can't wait for them to get shipped back to us. Natural Batik Village opens from 10am to 7pm. Hmm, I don't know what I'll do with my butterfly. 
Should I frame it? We would like to thank Direct Asia and each and every one of you for making this possible. If you'd like to support the channel, consider using Direct Asia as your insurer of choice on your next insurance subscription. But don't forget to use Very OK 30 or Very OK 60 at checkout. What is Bikers and Bikes without food? The ride to Maki Palace took us about 25 minutes from Natural Batik Village. And as with all cities, traffic can get heavy, so be sure to ride safe and pay attention. We've been on so yeah. many trips together. We tour uh -huh. to so many places. We do yeah, so but... much of Bikers and Bikes. How do you actually uh, choose your touring partner? These are million dollar questions. Uh. Like for my experience at least, you kind of have to have the same character. But more importantly, the Ching Chai character. Free-spirited character. What is Ching Chai? Ah? Uh, anything. That means you don't have a strong opinion about any options. I think being carefree, being spontaneous is very important. Group dynamics is very, very important. True. I mean, in a group of more than two or three, if you have one Indian chief, that is enough. If you have two Indian chief, problem will start. I mean, as, as crude as it sounds, I have met and I have lost a lot of friends uh, touring. You go on tour with them, you know, everyone's hot, everyone's uncomfortable, everyone's tired. You are going to see everyone's true colours, to put it bluntly. Lah. Beginning in a new group, you, you definitely will be very cooperative. Your tolerance level will be very high. So, but as you go on more trips, you realise that maybe this group is, the, the group dynamics doesn't suit you, and you start shifting to other groups. Eventually, out of so many groups you go, you will stick to a couple of one, two, or three, or maximum four person in the group. So that is pretty normal. So the telltale signs of how do you find a good touring partner? Number one, I think the character definitely cannot clash. Second, oh, yes. your riding pace for both of you have to be very similar. I've been on groups right where the skill level is too far apart. Okay, then you have the fast riders uh, who go all the way in front. And then you have the not so experienced riders at the back feeling all stressed out, right? They cannot keep up and then they start pushing and then accidents happen. So if you guys have any other tips on finding a good touring partner, please share them in the comments below. Help out the rider community. Maki Palace is a Malay-owned establishment that serves quite a mix of traditional and home-crafted dishes. They've got a private air-conditioned room available for booking when the family comes along. The rest of the interior isn't something to write home about, but it was well ventilated and didn't feel stuffy. I don't do lamb, so you... Why? This lamb is nice. Sure, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you, yay! This is a two-person biryani set. Mm -hmm. They've got a lamb shank, with, yeah. which is uh, Maki's specialty. And I got the honey chicken option. But I feel the flavour not strong enough. Maybe it's at the skin. The flavours are mainly on the outside. Food is subjective. Yeah. He might like one, I might not. I might like, you might not like, you might not like, I might like. Now I'm gonna try the lamb shank. Sorry bro, you're on your own. This one. Good food like this, Mark don't know how to appreciate. Too bad. Hey, good lah. Don't have the gummy taste that you said. Really? Hmm. I give you a small bite, you small try. Small one ah? Yeah, it's not strong. Half or don't have? Half lah, but not strong lah. Right not really ah, but I But I like it. It's soft, juicy. I feel it's better than the honey chicken. The granny I feel here is not the it's not a traditional Indian style granny. It's been mellowed down a little bit. I think mm. more to suit the palate for the mm. people around here. It's nice. So it's like a lighter biryani. Yeah, you got a lighter biryani. You know, like sometimes yeah. when you go to a coffee shop, you have biryani for lunch. You'll taste that biryani until at night. Yes. It, it this doesn't is feel a like it's lighter. lighter. Yeah. yeah. Well, the sauce nice day. Really good. I like the sauce. Good, right? Wow. <laughs> So this dish is called Roti Sarang Burung. Okay. I don't know what sarang is, but I know burung is bird. It's bird. Ah. So I'm assuming it's something to do with the egg. Ah. It's basically like, in Singapore we call prata. Right, then, oh, yeah. you, then, you, then you put the curry around the tsunami, so you all get soaked in the prata. We got beef, uh, min, minced beef, and like a plaster egg, egg on top. They smash up the roti chanai, which is our prata. Same thing, different name. Oh, yeah. I, I know some of you like prata crispy. I do, but this mixture with the sogging into the sauce works for this. This is a kacang pool. So what they did is to add butter on the bread, 
toast it and then you're supposed to dip and eat. The soup with this sauce. I'm gonna go and it's not pala and spicy. Mm. There's beans inside, right? Yeah, beans. You wanna feel very beany. Yeah, beans bean as well. So we had the lamb shank, we had the honey chicken, we had kacang pool, we had uh, prata, I, mean, I, I call it prata, tsunami prata lah, but it's, yeah, okay. Overall, this place still gets, uh, still okay, and the bikers and bites. Stick off! Yeah? Yes. If you are around the area, don't forget to look out for the sticker, okay? Sweet. Onward to Malacca! Bye! Oi, go lah! Let's go lah, oi!